What's up guys, Nugi here, and in today's video, the promised video, the cold snapper guide, uh, where we try and freeze as much as possible and benefit from the new skill tree in 1.3, where we get all that juicy elemental damage. So why cold snap? Um, and why are we focusing on this? Well, in 1.3, they really buff the elemental nodes uh, and the pathing for it. Um, Elemental damage buffs uh, heralds, so cold snap plus the herald damage is something that has great synergy. Cold snap is AoE, as you can see here. It's AoE spell and cold. Um, our herald of ice is cold cast and AoE. So that means the cold and the AoE goes uh, for both of these, which is amazing. So what that means is that on our skill tree, which I'm going to show you right here, we're going to be focusing on getting elemental damage, cold damage. We go up here, we bring up some more elemental damage, the cold penetration, which is really nice against resist monsters. Uh, then we walk over to the Templar side, which has even more. And we have the Celestial Punishment when Frozen Shocked or Ignited, which they're always going to be frozen. Uh, they take even more damage. Then you can go for these if you're. Uh, I would recommend these for soft cores, since we just min max in damage, and that's pretty much it. Like you were, we're really focusing on getting on that juicy, juicy elemental damage. You see, I don't go after spell damage or cast speed too much. Um, I gain, I get the very strong nodes as you can see here with the combined cast speed spell damage node with stats on them as well up here as well and these are definitely worth it i get the aoe e nodes because again it buffs both of the skills so that's pretty much the concept like that's the skill tree what are we going for there um in terms of gear the only thing that is required for this spec is romira's banquet so the the key part here is gain power tr charge on non-critical strike. Non-critical strikes means that whenever you hit a target from any source of your damage, meaning a herald of thunder, lightning bolt comes down, your cold snap comes down, any source of your damage hits a monster, it will gain you a power charge. Whenever you make a crit, it's gonna um, remove all the power charge you have. Why is this important? Cold snap, as you can see right here, uh, the cooldown can be bypassed by expending a power charge. So every time we have a power charge available, we can uh, forego the four second cooldown, as you can see the skill has. This means that in practice, as you can see four, that we can spam the cold snap, which will then freeze everything. Uh, why is it important that we freeze everything and we can do a lot of damage with cold snap? It's important because Herald of Ice. Um, if you shatter an enemy, they explode and deal AoE, cold damage to enemies nearby them. What does this mean? That means that if we have a target frozen, we kill it, it will shatter and the Herald of Ice will explode. As you can see down here, every time a monster explodes, it deals uh, almost 1800 to 2600 damage. That is quite a lot. Our cold stab itself deals up to 4.2k cold damage. As you can see earlier in the clip I showed you, uh, everything would blow up instantaneously. And this is because we're freezing everything. So how do we get this freeze onto everything? Elemental proliferation is another key part of the build. Um, elemental proliferation will make it so that whenever you freeze a target, it will then proliferate to everything next to it. So let's say the cold snap will freeze four targets in a cluster. Those four targets will proliferate in an area of 29. Uh, that's affected by the uh, increased area of all our, uh, like we have cargo stack here, we have a lot of increased area. You can also see here on the tree, um, increased area of uh, radius of area skills. That's gonna be applied as well to the elemental proliferation. So all this area is applied to this, and that means that we might have 20 monsters, 30 monsters even, all be frozen, 
And what happens then when you kill that first monster or two, that explodes, the next one explodes, and then it just cascades outwards. Vroom, and you will explode the entire screen because of all the shatters coming through. If you were then to go with concentrated effect, we would only have those four initial monsters exploding. Um, and that wouldn't give us that that now wouldn't give us um, that cascading explosion. It still works, but you won't have that screen wide freeze uh, as you see with proliferation. However, with Kong effect, uh, we will get that single target freeze because uh, as you can see here now we get up to 4,000 or 7,000 cold damage, which means that even rares with high resist and uh, most bosses will now get frozen. Of course, the very, very, very high HP bosses uh, will only get chilled, such as uh, Dominus, uh, Dominus Second Form, um, Vol, uh, those kind of very, very high uh, HP bosses. Uh, I haven't, I have permafrozen uh, Shrine Piety, um, and I don't even have max level of gems, so or a six link where we could use added cold. And let me show you here with added cold what would happen. You see here now it goes up to eight point three. This can gain two more levels. Coldstone can gain two more levels. Would easily hit like 10k with good gear and a six link. So what this means is that literally almost any boss in the game will also uh, be able to get frozen. Pretty impressive. Though we won't have that elemental proliferation, so we won't have as much of a cascading uh, effect. So what you can do, you can have uh, you can have this nearby, and whenever you get whenever you get like a, a hard rare or a boss you want to freeze just swap it in from the from your inventory that's what i've been doing and it works it works great um other gear that's very nice for this build would be dorianis catalyst and dorianis invitation granting you even more freeze chance and dorianis catalyst giving you that elemental damage buffing both your heralds and your main uh, your main source of damage uh, you can do without these. This is what I started with in this league. Um, two normal scepters. They have innate uh, elemental damage, which is really nice. But you can see down here, our Hail of Ice from 2000 to 2600. Quite the difference from the explosion. But it still works with... The only thing you still need is Romero's Banquet. So what are the gem setups for this? Um, we do have the Cold Snap combined with Faster Casting Echo. Elemental proliferation and added cold. Um, for single target, this means that there's less of a chance that you, with with, with this kind of uh, cast speed alongside with the uh, on hit damage, um, it means that you don't freeze on every attack or every cast. But having a lot of casts mean that there's gonna be less chance that it's gonna fade out the freeze so that's why we want to cast it all the time for aoe purposes we want to spread the effect we want to spread the effect to all the monsters as quick as possible as well so you could try different setups but i have found that cast faster casting spell echo is definitely the choice we want to make here uh, you might wonder well i've heard a lot of other builds taking resolute technique so why are you not taking resolute technique there's a few reasons why I don't. Uh, five points of investment is a lot. Uh, I could go 25% extra life. I would like that. Or I could go 25% extra damage. Um, the way you should deal with uh, the occasional crit is that whenever you do crit, you proliferate the shock because you have lightning damage here as well. So the shock gets, so you will, uh, a shock will occur on the crit, right? What, what that means is that if you're shocking a small pack, like if you just kill at least one monster that's shocked, it will then trigger the Herald of Thunder. So the Herald of Thunder now starts shooting down. And as we noticed before, any source of your damage will apply power charge to you. So as soon as the first Thunder hits, you gain a new power charge and you can start casting it again. So for 99% of the time, you never even notice the fact that you did a crit. The only thing is that you do deal a little bit more damage all of a sudden and everything blows up just a little bit faster. Um, I'm trying a different few setups for, for like boss fights and single targets where you have where I put in the increased duration storm call. 
because that means that even if we crit, we have the stall con go like going on uh, continuously while we're fighting. Um, and by the time the storm call is over, you should have killed the boss already. So that's the idea behind this. One thing that's very uh, dangerous for this build is the reflect. So as you can see in the video, I went quite low on reflect at one point. Uh, it is a curse immune map. So that means that our cast and damage taken wallet's mark did not go into effect. Uh, with this build right now, I have uh, Vault Pact. There's a lot of different sway ways you can deal with Reflect. The way I deal with this on this guy is that I have double Dorianis. I have Dorianis Invitation. This gives me 3% uh, Cold Leech um, and 2% Lightning Leech as well here because it applies both to um, Cold and Lightning. I have cast and damage taken wallet's mark. And then we come to the to one of the key parts. It is the links on Herald of Ice. I always like linking it to increased area of effect. It really makes the cascade like crazy. You you screen wide clear. That's very nice. I think I think going with the um, kind of um, I think this build really shines through the the AOE shatter. It, it makes it so much fun. Um, what you then can do is you can put in coal to fire. You could run Arctic armor. So you would convert fifty of it. 50% uh, of it into a fire hit that you can then mitigate through um, through Arctic Armor. That's an uh, that's an option. It will require slightly better mana regen gear to run that Arctic Armor, but I would say that with Eldrix battery, it's definitely viable. I'm also running uh, the Conduit gloves right now just because I was running in a group. Um, Asenath, uh, Gentle Touch with the Temporal Chance on hit is a very nice choice. Uh, you can corrupt these with Ella Weakness and, double, and run Double Curse. That would be extremely potent. I would say that would be probably the best in slot. If you're uh, on um, on a softcore league at least. If you're running on a hardcore league, I might go with a more defensive setup in terms of uh, getting a max life roll with resist. So we can really like get the max life roll on every piece of gear we have. Uh, you might not even run the Uranus Invitation. Um, there are so many setups you can run. Uh, with Vault Pack, you can also run Life Leech in here, which I was doing uh, in the Curse Immune map because I wouldn't get the Wallet's Mark. So this this means that pretty much the explosion is completely negated and will heal you every time it explodes. So that's the way of doing it. Uh, you can also run Cold Pen, and now you rely completely on Wallet's Mark because if that doesn't go off, you will instantaneously die. Um, I had another character on Hardcore that I got to around 80 with. I've, I've made this character a few times um, and I one shot myself on reflect uh, with this kind of setup. Um, I, I kind of underestimated how much damage I would do. Uh, but there is a lot of ways that you can deal with this. You can also get some spell block um, to take out some of it because there are so many instances of damage going on. So you spell block some and then you have the instantaneous leech. And you can have a potion down here as well, and you can run Purity of Ice. Um, you, there are so many ways, and honestly, I would suggest that whatever way you choose, there is there is many right there are many right answers depending on your playstyle. Um, but I think the most offensive one is probably the Call to Fire. And running Arctic Armor, this also gives you great survivability uh, for a hardcore league, for instance, where you could run uh, you could run Purity of Ice, uh, Saffold's Frame, you could run um, you could even run the Minor Matter Chest, the Cloak of Defiance, really just taking everything into account to negate Reflect, and also giving you a great amount of survivability. You can still go with the Cargus Jack and not go the Cloak of Defiance. Uh, there's, even for Harker, there are so many options uh, that you can go through, but the core is the same. It's Ramirez Banquet, Elemental Damage, AoE, and then we just deal with the Reflect in many different ways through Leech, through Resist, uh, however you want to do it is fine. The rest of the gear is just rare pieces where you try and get as much life and as much resist to cap it out as possible, get that movement speed and you're fine. Again, the only thing you need is Ramirez Banquet and you can go with complete a complete rare set of gear. Otherwise, um, all these are just min-max purposes that are very, very cool. Now, the last thing I want to show you here 
is how do I progress in the beginning um, until level 60 or 65 ish I would suggest that you went uh, freezing pulse for instance you can take these two nodes right here sniper projectile damage get a a low quality freezing pulse whatever is cheap get it to like between 5 and 10 it's fine that sh that little extra projectile damage you get from this node plus the the slight quality will be enough for you to have a good time with freezing poles and you go with the shadow side you go up here you get the cold damage you go here you pick some life you skip all the aoe nodes until you actually get the cold snap uh, you can get some more damage here damage is also defense so just just take whatever you need if you need a dexterity point take the dexterity point if you need a strength node take the strength node it's okay while leveling we have respect points for a reason but the progression is pretty much pretty linear here it's just go from shadow to witch to um to templar pick up the most efficient nodes whenever you feel like you need them there's no there's pretty much no wrong answer if you don't want to go for this up here to start with if you feel like oh i really need some life then pick up like a life wheel here pick up the life uh, i would take the shadow this entire shadow thing first and then what i did was i went up here got the cold got some more damage got the life got some more damage here went down here got the life and the damage and some more damage and then i started branching out the last path you want to take is going to be down towards wall pact um do some research uh there is uh understand that effectiveness of bleach is 40 percent. so this is why we need that life leech gem or the cult of fire to mitigate some of the damage if we are going this way uh, the three percent leech here is is very good but it's not enough to cover everything so by the time you get to the point where you will start getting to use vault pact you should have you should know by this time you should have done some research in terms of how much do you actually need depending on uh your purity your max resist what kind of setup you're running uh, right now i would need with the purity I think I need around 6% and as you can see I only have 3% so that's why I need some extra mitigation um, but it does help me about getting one shot from my own cold snap and my herald of ice I won't kill myself with because I have these other options so yeah that's about it and uh, I am going to leave you with a little bit of fun something that happens when you use uh, Dorianis catalyst lightning warp uh, and the spec so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next time